long live your turtle here and finally my turtles have a permanent place to live. My wife and I were lucky enough in these unprecedented times to land ourselves a beautiful house and that means that these turtles are finally done. Knock on wood. Ah, that's particle board. Oh yeah, solid wood. Finally, the turtles will not be dragged around from apartment to apartment. Wherever I decided to live before, we finally have a house and we're settling here. And while I love setting up tanks over and over and over again in different places, sneaking them around, now I can really focus on creating epic places for them to live as well as try out all of the cool products that exist out there for turtles and also the really not so cool why do you sell those products. Now in this video specifically I'm going to show you how I set up my turtle room itself and what I mean by that is this is a very unfinished basement. Uh, what it came with was two walls that here and here and otherwise it's just cement walls here uh, and then a cement floor. So since I've moved in, I've spruced it up quite a bit just to make it a little more aesthetically pleasing down here and not a dark, damp basement. That included installing flooring on that cement cold floor, finishing up the walls here, and then just setting things up to look a little more comfortable. So stick around in this video. I'm gonna kind of narrate as I work on things. So this would be a great video for someone that has a basement that they wanna improve a little bit without going crazy and putting up dry walls, but also make a way more livable space for you, your turtles, or whatever else you want to do with your living space here. I meant turtle room. Turtle room. I meant turtle room. All right, welcome to day one of the turtle room with lots of work to be done. It has a carpet duct taped to the concrete floor. Threw that away, obviously, and there is our beautiful concrete floor and our unpainted walls. So first thing I did was I dealt with the floor. So I went with a dry lock for concrete floors, like a basement or your garage. And really it's gonna be kind of a moisture barrier and just a protector of the floor. I'll be putting obviously subfloor and flooring over this, but it's gonna be the first line of defense from any sort of small water leaks or anything trying to push up through the concrete floor here in our basement. Now applying this is very straightforward. You can see I just poured a diluted first coat and I'm using a roller to just push it around and you just want to push it, you know, everywhere. Now, if you look at my corners where the walls meet the floor, I went up a couple inches just to, you know, increase that barrier a little bit beyond just the floor itself. And then I use a brush for the really awkward spots as well. Let that first coat dry and then apply a second coat and you're all done. I would just make sure you don't have huge cracks in your foundation because that could be a problem with just this simple paint. Now, before continuing with the flooring, I wanted to take care of those bare sheetrock walls and put a nice coat of primer on them. Now, look how nice the floor looks with that dry lock. Let's cover it up. What I covered it up with was a dry core subfloor. Now, this is a really cool product that has a trademarked air gap technology. And what the manufacturers claim is it protects against moisture, mold, mildew, and small water leaks, which is excellent for a turtle room, let alone just a basement room. It also softens the floor a bit. It's really strong, so it can hold tanks. And the final bonus is it keeps the room a little warmer. And I've even noticed this with those two unfinished walls. Now, some big things to know here. Awkward areas are perimeter of your room because you're going to need to cut different dry core pieces away from that 2x2 two two that they give you. And places like doorways, especially if you already have molding installed. With the dry core down, the next step is to install underlayment, which is basically a big foam roll. Uh, this is the cheap stuff as a basement. I'm not too worried. It's not super high traffic, but it basically softens the blow on the feet and creates a protective barrier between the subfloor and the floorboards. All right, you have to bear with me for this part because all I have is pictures to talk through. Next step, install our floorboards. I went with a laminate plank floorboard, and this is just a water-resistant one. Definitely suggest going with waterproof. My only problem there was I needed the money, as Watto might say in Star Wars Phantom Menace. Now, when I first started this, I thought it'd be really difficult, but in the end, as long as I was patient and really work things out before just jumping into it, this was actually quite straightforward, and I think anyone could do it. Two keys to success here, watch YouTube videos and expect to mess up quite a few times before you really get a hang of it, so have some extra boards on hand. Things to note here, you're gonna want a laminate board cutter, Doing this with a saw is not gonna look pretty. 
and you're going to want to really make sure that you're getting the correct gap to your walls because this is a floating floor so it can expand and contract based on temperature and humidity and you don't want that to cause issues with your flooring later on that'll be really hard to go back and fix uh, other than that you need some basic tools like some hammers and some various flat crowbar type tools. And again, watch YouTube. You're gonna feel a lot more comfortable doing this and you'll be surprised at how easy it actually is. With the floor installed, I've started to paint the walls. I had leftover accent wall paint uh, from another room in our house and used that. It was like this nice light green and it was perfect for you know a turtle room. When you think of turtle, you think of green, right? And then I had some baseboard pieces and trim pieces that I painted a pure ultra white. Now you can see me installing the baseboards here. And if you have one, you know, nail guns are really easy to use. Borrow one if you need one. But you might think I'm long live your turtle contractors here. That's not true. This is all simple stuff, people. Fill those nail holes and do another coat of paint for that trim board. All right, that was it. I couldn't wait any longer. I need to get the turtle tanks into my new turtle room. PSA, tanks are not light. Please get another person to help you out here. My wife was the champ in this round. Now here with the tanks installed, you can see that there's a big concrete wall that's kind of an eyesore. So what I wanted to do there, without doing really much at all, was get a giant tapestry. A nice natural looking one like I have here, which is basically you're looking out of a cave at a waterfall with a beautiful forest. And my approach here was to get the tapestry as straight as possible because I don't want it to be drooping like a tapestry typically would if you picture it in like a college dorm room. I want it to be straight across so it looks kind of real you know so what i did was i stapled it to a straight one and a half inch board and that is going to be placed on the ledge of my concrete basement wall and you'll see me doing that in a second now you might be asking why am i not just finishing the whole room and that is definitely a project for the future because i do want this room to be completely finished including the ceiling there because you can see that's an eyesore but i keep that out of the videos for a reason come on now but there you have it once I got all the tanks set up, the room looked awesome. The space came out way better than I expected, and the turtles are loving their new setups in their new home. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video of me setting up the new turtle room. I'll have plenty of videos in the future showing these tank setups specifically and lots and lots more. If you want to check out my Etsy store for a turtle basking dock that you could put on your tank, check that out. Long live your turtle!